get dry. Okay. So, what was last time? Last time we uh, was studying the the orbit of Mercury and how does it precedes. Okay. So we need to write down Schwarzschild metric once again. <sighs> okay, probably it will be better to do. So this is Schwarzschild. She -e. metric, and we studied how does uh, perihelion of the uh, Mercury orbit changes according to this relativistic approach and we have found this the estimate for this small very small difference with with Newtonian Newtonian classical mechanics okay next so I just want to remind that that to estimate this small difference we should integrate uh, this this type of all equation so this was energy this was angular momentum um, this is gravitational radius Oops. okay and this uh, uh, in the Newtonian case uh, there was no uh, this term and it is easy to understand because if you will uh, consider this limit when the speed of light goes to infinity this will go to zero yeah and this polynomial will have uh, four roots two of them will be zero yeah and something like that for example there was uh, r plus and r minus so this exactly was uh, these roots exactly corresponds to aphelion and perihelion uh, point or points on the orbit uh, but in relativistic case we have this third non-zero root and you should estimate it and uh, finally it can all can be done okay uh, So what next? Uh, next is the following thing. 
by doing this the same calculations so you should consider what so what what we want to to do now uh, we want to estimate the uh, deviation of the uh, uh, light so here we have somewhere sun and although the photon has zero mass so no it's not very good somewhere here yeah this is sun if there wasn't um, sun here yeah so the space will in this case would be uh, empty and and flat and uh, this tra trajectory of light will be straight but uh, uh, the sun has big mass and uh, this mass curve our space uh, sp actually space time and uh, this trajectory curves so and we want to estimate this this angle actually it is uh, very very small uh, i mean in practice so but still and this was uh, the second great uh, uh, achievement of the relativity so uh, this experiment probably you've heard this story yes everybody heard this story that uh, some journalist asked Einstein what would be if experiment uh, would fail yes so there was an expedition I think somewhere in Africa and uh, those guys should calculate estimate this deviation of the of the light yeah it really should be very small about a couple of uh, arc seconds <coughs> but still and you understand yes in the beginning of the 20th century all the te techniques was uh, was not so uh, so uh, good as now so the uh, so experiment it was was very big probability that experiment would fail yeah and some journalists asked what if the experiment would fail einstein answered that i will um, i will have some pity for the god yes because actually the theory is right so so it will it will mean that something wrong with reality with our universe although the theory is absolutely correct so but still uh, the experiment wasn't fail and exactly 1 and 75 arc seconds was in agree with this uh, relativistic theory and everything was okay so what next this is okay so uh, this e equation differential equation on r uh, there wa uh, was r prime it was partial derivative of r by the angle phi uh, doing uh, the same technique we can get the following equation for the photon you should uh, it can be done actually by two ways i i will say about it later but from standard lagrangian approach you can consider this um, with the same equations and you will get the following so this is the same as previous equations almost 
and we should put here m uh, uh, big m is the mass of the gravity is the gravitating mass big mass this mass is uh, the mass of the small body that rotates around big big one and as we consider the photon we should put m small to zero so this is almost the same as in previous case and we get new equation so uh, this term this term can be uh, there is a formula that there is link between energy angular momentum mass and draw rho is this um, this thing so you have sun actually the light should go very near the sun so so you should uh, feel this um, you, 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 so you can notice this small deviation so rho this is the uh, trajectory of light and this is the correction so you should uh, uh, look only on those lights that goes very near the sun yeah that's why you should uh, um, consider this uh, black hole sun yeah uh, you, you cannot register this light this light goes uh, of course from some very far away star yeah and if you don't have a, a black hole on, on the sky you couldn't register this because uh, the, 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 the sun is too bright okay so this rho is the physical radius of the sun here okay so then you do some some new variables and finally eventually you will get this equation uh, you should consider a new variable u uh, here and then you will get this this equation that one and you see that this the power up yes the power of the right hand side in this case is is three not four as in previous A case when it was mm, non-zero mass and like in previous case we should integrate this equation yeah so what is phi phi exactly is that angle so i just uh, remind you that we have uh, that we have polar system of coordinate and rho and r which is here is a function of phi of angle yeah and we consider the trajectory of a photon that goes from in from one infinity to another infinity if there wouldn't uh, if there were not uh, gravitating mass here it would be uh, it would be a straight light yeah so every point on this uh, line is uh, 
uh, parameterized by this R, R, which is function of phi. Mm, so uh, we can do the, the, the same thing uh, as in previous case. So consider, for example, that uh, phi is a function of R. And uh, if you will integrate when you consider angle as a function of radius, you should integrate this, uh, this uh, um, equation, differential equation, from minus infinity to plus infinity, yeah? if you consider phi as a function of r. And uh, of, of something that uh, stands right here, yeah? in, in right, in right uh, coordinates here. So here should be dr. Uh, uh, and then what should you do? You see that if, for example, for example, this is uh, axis, axis at equals to phi equals zero, yeah? So this is sum, this is polar coordinate, and we consider this trajectory light going from minus infinity to plus infinity. If there wasn't mass, so uh, phi will what will have this this uh, integrate integration this integral what will be if there wasn't mass what what no when you you consider this uh, point yeah this is a photon it 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 comes from minus infinity yeah, in that direction. And this is uh, phi. It depends on r, yes, as, as like this integral. And this integral comes from this differential equation. Uh, OK, yeah? So and uh, if there wasn't mass and this was straight line, yeah, then this, uh, this integral, what? P. P. P, it would be pi. Yeah, because it it goes from that point to that point. And this this integral is will, will be strictly zero. But uh, it won't be strictly zero because because of terms, yeah, some additional small terms. And this exactly will be delta phi, because here we have some gravitating mass and it goes some way here, yeah. And this angle is exactly delta phi. So this is basic idea, just the same as in previous case. So we construct, in, in previous case, when we consider the uh, Mercury perihelion, we uh, uh, integrate this sum, another integral. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, some uh, analogous integral to understand what was the um, the delta of phi when so we un understand that uh, the peri perihelion rotates yeah by integrating this integral uh, for for angle as a function of r when r was uh, was changing from uh, r plus to r minus, yeah, from um, perihelion to aphelion. Okay, and there was some small difference in the case of Mercury. So here, almost the same, and uh, it can be estimated. So just to illustrate that that thing <clears throat> so if we will rewrite in another way minus M over rho. I'm not sure about these constants, but it should be 
actually small, small one. Uh, so probably, yeah. So this is the mass of the sun, and if there wasn't sun, just to understand that it's, this is correct equation, we can uh, we can integrate this thing. Yeah. So if there wasn't sun, so mass would be zero, and to understand that the trajectory will be the straight line, we should integrate this this equation. Well, it is quite easy. Yeah. So du over 1 minus u squared equals 2 d phi. We integrate. This is phi plus phi zero. And this is, uh, what is that? K. What? U equals to sine s, yeah, for example du then equals to cosine s ds and here we will also have uh, cosine s yeah so this is equals to just to s and s is of course arc sine of the u so u equals to sinus of phi plus phi zero, but it doesn't matter actually this phi zero constants of integration. And I remind you that u is u is rho divided by r, yeah? Let us put phi zero to zero because this is just a rotation of the polar uh, coordinate system. Okay. And uh, what is that in polar system of coordinate? If you have this, this be dependence between radial coordinate and angular coordinate equals to rho divided by sine sinus of phi. In polar coordinates, what is that? Let's remember our definition of the sinus from school, yeah? Um, so what is sinus? Sinus of the angle is this proportion. Proportion of this catheter. Yes, to the hypotenuse. Yeah. So this is rho and this is r. Yeah. You see that sinus phi actually is the rho divided by r. Yeah. And you see this, so this is just, if you put the origin of the polar coordinate here, it will, this equation for rho will, uh, for any angle phi, yeah, you will get the straight line. So, <clears throat> usually in polar coordinates, uh, some, very simple geometric ob objects can have not very simple form. So this is the, exactly the, the uh, formula for the line in pole, straight line in the polar coordinate. Okay, so we see that if there wouldn't, uh, if there wasn't this term, we should uh, get straight line, straight trajectory of a photon. But we have this mass and we should estimate the integral. And 
this estimation is the following. So I'd like to to skip some calculations. If you consider new new variable uh, of of the following. So this was u, yeah, and you can see the new variable alpha, which equals to arc cos, arc cosine of u. And then, instead of integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity, you can integrate uh, this integral. So phi will be 2 from 0 to pi over 2. So you can integrate, you can do the same from minus pi over 2. And then there wasn't these two of the following function. Cosine of alpha plus 1 over the 1 plus cosine alpha uh, d alpha. So I, I just skipped uh, this not interesting calculations. You see, you, you have the equation on u depending on phi, yeah, so you can inverse. Uh, so is one of the phi yeah so you can consider phi as a function of u u is uh, is the function of r and uh, also it is a function of alpha when you construct all these calculations you can find the differential equation on the phi as a function of alpha and then you should integrate this integral okay uh, so of course we have one here and this will be 2 alpha with from 0 to pi over 2. And this is exactly pi, which would be the straight line. But also, there is small correction for this. And in this case, it can be integrated explicitly plus 2 m over r sine alpha plus tangent alpha squared also from 0 to pi over 2. So uh, this is some standard things yeah. So you, you integrate cosine, you get sine, and this you can use this formula for the, for the half half of arguments. So this is uh, easy. Okay. So what do we get? We get finally. Finally, pi plus, uh, uh, so the sines from 0 to pi over 2 is 1, and tangents is also 1, yeah? So this is exactly this small addition, this small deviation from the straight line is exactly 
what was uh, uh, discovered one century ago, and this is about 1.75 arc seconds. Okay. So, what else? Uh, you can do all this calculation from the different point of view. You can consider the uh, so there is different uh, point of view on this. So if you uh, forgot about the mass, yes, and forgot about the classical Lagrangian mechanics, what do you have is only the curved time space, yeah, and uh, and you can see the the photon that moves on some trajectory. Yes, if the, the space is not curved, if it is flat, then this trajectory would be straight line, yeah? And if uh, it is curved, what would be this trajectory? How would it be called? If some, what? No. In general, I mean. So you have some uh, uh, some curvature in your time space, yeah, and you put on some light, yeah, and light goes with not a straight line, but with some trajectory. What this trajectory would be from the geometrical point of view? Geodesical, yeah. This trajectory will be exactly geodesical line. So you can consider the equation of geodesics. So you have metric, yeah, Schwarzschild metric. So you can consider the geodesical equations. I just uh, want to remind uh, this. So what were the geodesics? Uh, K plus gamma i j k u dot i u dot j plus zero. So this will be geodesics uh, on general Riemannian or Lorentzian manifold. Doesn't matter. So this was the Christoffel symbols. And uh, so you should integrate this equation. You, you got everything you need to calculate these equations. You have metric, so you can calculate the symbols. And then, after all, you, you could uh, calculate this trajectory, yeah? And to estimate this, its deviation from the um, straight line. Of course, eventually you will you will come to the same equation. Yes. Uh, okay. So okay. Actually, it's good uh, good exercise to do this from this point of view. You can. For example, if you have this term uh, behind the dr, 1 over the 1 minus rgr, yes? If this, this term is small, yeah? Then what you can, uh, with what function you can estimate this one? Well, it's very usual and useful in, in that case for, for the geodesical equations. It would be here plus, yeah? Right? So uh, this is, this is a uh, geometrical uh, progression, yeah? Okay. 
So this is more or less uh, everything that I wanted to tell about Schwarzschild metric. Uh, of course, you can uh, study it some different. Uh, you can try to integrate in this uh, geodesic equations, but this is a long story. Okay. What else? What else solutions do we know to the Einstein equations? So there is Kern Newman metric. And it has the following form. Unfortunately, uh, it, it, it generalized Schwarzschild metric and it is uh, rather new. Uh, so I'll put it in very general case. Uh, dt squared minus uh, actually these coordinates in which uh, this metric is written has some special name also and I think I think I would have a place for this metric okay Theta dt d phi. So you see that the metric is not diagonal. Kern-Newman metric is a solution for Einstein equation uh, uh, with nodes uh, uh, vanishing energy impulse tensor, but with vanishing uh, scalar curvature. bracket is multiplied by sinus squared theta d phi squared and two L summons left. Okay. R squared plus L squared M squared cosine squared theta R squared minus two M R L plus q squared q squared and this is dr squared and the last one r squared plus you see that this metric depends on three parameters yeah mass, uh, gravitating mass, L is an angular moment, uh, it means that uh, your body is rotating, and Q is a charge, electric charge, it also means that it is uh, charged. What? R is a coordinate. R is a, is a, so we have, th what? What R? So we have coordinates time R, phi and theta. 
time uh, radial coordinates and two angles and these parameters which uh, describes your black hole for example if you want so the black hole has mass m angular moment l and electric charge q and i think that's all uh, unfortunately as far as i know maybe i'm wrong i suppose that you could know this it's better that there is no um, experiments that could uh, provide some some good experiments to prove that this metric isn't good uh, uh, con consideration with reality or, or isn't bad so but as far as i know this is the most general uh, solution to Einstein equation that has um, real good physical meaning. Okay. <coughs> so, so, uh, um, so I, I, as I said, the, there is no good experiment. So we couldn't illustrate that this is some great uh, some great solution but still um, as far as i know many guys uh, study these metrics a lot and uh, well yeah okay and you see that uh, the 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 functions of the metric depends only on radial radial uh, coordinate yeah and uh, one of the angle it doesn't depend on time t it means that uh, our uh, the the space uh, doesn't change uh, in time yeah the the curvature of the space doesn't change in time uh, and doesn't depends on angle phi so it w it is really long and difficult problem to find some uh, physically meaningful solution with metric that depends depends on all three spatial coordinates but as far as i know the, there is no uh, exact solution of this type okay so and the same problem in Riemannian geometry when you consider not time space but general for example, four-dimensional metric, Riemannian metric. Mm, it is very difficult to find solutions that depends on all the parameters. Depends, I mean, non non-trivially. So, of course, you can define, for example, different phi. Yeah? Instead of phi, you can consider different function of phi. Yeah, and it will change your the, in this place you, if uh, instead of d phi you will get some f prime yes if you will consider this uh, new parameter instead of phi you consider f of phi yeah so this sum you will get phi prime of phi yeah but this is uh, this is a trivial a trivial case because you can uh, get this integ integration here and, and the, the metric uh, from because of this changing won't uh, won't uh, be new okay okay let's have a break now a couple with this problem that for example you have to metrics that that are written down in different coordinates and you want to check if this matrix uh, define the same space times or different yeah so there is uh, different types of classification of the curvature tensor uh, I want to today to to begin uh, to to describe the Petrov classification 
trough uh, was our mathematician who worked in Kazan. By the way, then he goes somewhere else, uh, as far as I remember. And uh, uh, most well-known classification of the curvature tensor is the, has his name. This is Petrov classification. So today I will start, and then I will accomplish all this thing. Okay, so I'll need some some new notations. Uh, oh man. So everybody knows what this. Yes or no? This is symmetrization on of the of the first n indices. Uh, what is that? This is summation over the all uh, over the all permutation of the order n, and here you don't put the sign of the permutation. You just consider the symmetrical. This is symmetrization of, of the now, uh, yes alpha of sigma of one alpha of sigma of n, and then alpha n plus 1, and then alpha s. Yeah, so th this is the row of the indices. Some standard notations, and of course, do not forget to divide by what? How many uh, Summations, summons do we have here? Huh? Come on. How many permutations of order n do we do you have? Yes, exactly, and factorial. So this is well-known uh, coefficient. Also, for example, you we can use this this notation. for the square brackets, yeah? But here you should multiply by the sign of this uh, permutation sigma. And, uh, okay, this is the same rules. Uh, hold and yes, and for example, also there is some distributive law for these operations on the indices. It means that This is uh, 
Okay. Uh, but uh, you should notice that this index should be the same here and here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in the in the end of the last uh, last uh, year, I've introduced only Ricci. Uh, only Riemann, Riemann tensor, Ricci tensor, and scalar curvature, and maybe sectional curvature. But you see that uh, there are so many indices in uh, in Riemann uh, Riemann tensor, so you can form a lot of different tensors, and uh, <coughs> I don't know. Will I tell you about? So you see that if you have, for example, four-dimensional time space, it means that you have some Lie group that acting on that space. Yeah, for example, rotations in the in the space and uh, hyperbolic rotations in the time and space coordinates, and uh, uh, of course your. Uh, your curvature tensor should be invariant under these rotations. Yeah. So actually, it means that uh, in the whole in the whole Riemannian tensor, you can uh, consider three different uh, three different summons. This is scalar curvature, trace traceless Ricci curvature, and what is left is uh, Weyl tensor. And on each of these tensors, uh, this uh, Lie group acts uh, uh, irreducible. Yes, on 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 each of these summons, uh, this uh, Lie group, the Lie group of the moving in time space, acts irreducibly. Maybe I will tell you about this later. Maybe we'll have some time. Not sure, actually. Okay, so let's define some new tensors because it is necessary to give the classification. Here we have Ricci minus R. R is a scalar curvature. And G. This tensor is Schouten tensor. So basically, this is a traceless, traceless Ricci. Yeah. So if you consider the trace of this uh, p, you will get zero because the the trace of Ricci is exactly the scalar curvature multiplied by some normalization factor. Okay. So this tensor. I wrote uh, it down uh, without indices, and I will explain. Okay, so this will be fat R minus P G. So here, what is here? P is the Houghton tensor. R fat is the Riemann tensor. G is a metric, and this is so-called Karninamidzu product. And uh, in this 
and these notations all all indexes is uh, is down down indexes yeah so this is the Riemannian tensor usually we have three indexes um, uh, down and one index uh, up so we can put uh, this index down by using this metrical tensor yeah and we will get this uh, Riemann tensor with four indices down. Okay, and this Kulkarni Namidz product is a product that goes uh, from, you have space of, uh, of symmetrical uh, zero to tensor. I don't remember how does it, so you obviously see that this tensor is symmetrical and uh, have type 0, 2, and metric, of course, 2, yeah? So there is a product that uh, that is defined on this space of symmetrical 0, 2, symmetrical 0, 2, 2. Mm, I don't remember. So when you have two tensor, yeah, it is easy to understand what symmetrical means. So this, the, the result of this product is tensor of zero uh, four type. Uh, I'll write down it just now. So, and of course this, this is the definition of wild tensor. So you see that uh, uh, Riemann tensor can be uh, uh, can be split it into three summons. Yeah, while tensor plus this part and in this part plus this scalar part. Yeah. So uh, on each of the summons, the the Lorentz group acts irreducibly and uh, of course there is big theory about reducible representations where does it acts and uh, maybe I will find some time to talk about this but it actually it's 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 all already not really geometry and I'm not specialist there okay so let's write down while tensor in coordinates. And this is uh, only for the for the one uh, for the for dimensional for dimensional case, including time space. Uh, this while tensor have the following components. Riemann plus uh, scalar part and here we should know have the following notice. C D B Okay, so we see here you have a metric multiplied by metric here and here and here the scalar part. So this is so-called one-dimensional in terms of metric, uh, one-dimensional uh, representation. Then this Ricci part, traceless Ricci. And it becomes traceless because of this this square brackets and uh, multiplying by metric times. Okay, so this is uh, Schouten. Um, multiplied 
with Kulkarni Namidzu product with uh, with metric. This is ex exactly the 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 definition of the so minus here plus here and then also using this this uh, square brackets anti-symmetrization on on these indices. This is exactly the the uh, definition of Kulkarni Namidzu product. But uh, never mind. It's just to to write down some some formulas a little bit easier. Okay. And then then you can construct five. So this is wild tensor. You see that uh, if you extract from the from the Riemann tensor, the most primitive parts, the most simple, it means it's scalar curvature, one-dimensional representation, plus traceless Ricci, the, the, then what is left is Weyl tensor. For example, uh, there is some different uh, characteristic of this tensor. For example, if your space is conformally flat, then its uh, while tensor of, of, of this metric is vanishing. Okay, yeah? Conformally flat is, is the following thing. It means that... <laughs> if your metric has the following view, for example, this sum function depends on on coordinates and then you have flat metric flat euclidean metric plus plus dx n squared so this is the flat metric of the of rn then you multiply this metric by some function usually by the way you multiply it by exponential function by e to the power of some 2u for example because it is very easy to differentiate exp exponent function. And uh, if your metric have this form, it, it is uh, equivalent to the while tensor to be zero. So you see that this is form very, very nice, but still, if your metric has this form, uh, it is called conformally flat. It means that uh, the biggest part of the remaining antenna vanishes. So it means that almost uh, the many uh, good and interesting metrics doesn't have this form. Okay, so this is wild tensor. Uh, from its coordinates, we can construct some um, values, and using these values, we will we will do our classification next. Uh, I want you to just to put it down because uh, actually it's rather long notations but it is unavoidable unfortunately so k m l and m mm, bar this will be some new coordinate, which I will explain later. From wild tensor, we construct all this stuff.
it down and then next time probably I'll told the the algorithm to that uses this these values which is you can get from while tensor to uh, classify your metric by the Petrov classification. Okay. Uh, what else? So I told you that uh, sometimes, sometimes it is easy, much more convenient to use not uh, not coordinate vector fields, but some non-holonomic uh, vector fields. Did I say about this word non-holonomic? No, okay. Non-holonomic means that uh, I think I told you that, uh, for example, you have two vector fields on your manifold. Yes? If you have one vector field, it means that you can always construct at least locally curves such that its velocity will uh, be the same as this vector field. Okay? Once again, you have vector field, yeah? At every point you have a vector and this is smooth vector field okay uh, if you always can construct some curve at least locally with uh, velocity such that velocity of this curve will coincide with this vector field yes this is this statement is just the statement from the ordinary differential equation that locally you always can solve the Cauchy problem. Yeah, this is the same. If you have two vector fields in general, is it possible to construct so at every point you have two vector fields, two vectors, and they change smoothly from point to point. Is it possible to construct a, a surface, two-dimensional surface, such that its uh, tangent play will uh, coincide with this plane, which belongs to these two vectors? Hmm? So you have two vector fields. You want to construct the family of the sur surfaces such that its tangent uh, planes will mm, coincide with these planes. I is it always possible or no? No. Why? Commutator. Commutator or Lie bracket? Yes? It's exactly the same. So, and this is exactly the same as Frobenius the theorems. It means that uh, that uh, your um, you have a submanifold only when all the commutators vanishing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to say, I wanted to say that uh, if you have two vector fields, for example, U and V. And uh, the general vector fields, of course, you can write down it is, for example, like u equals to f dx plus g dy, yeah, for example, plus some um, something h d z in three-dimensional space. V will be the same, but with uh, but with a different function. If you consider this Lie bracket of these uh, vector fields, you will get another vector field. Yeah? 
In general, it won't be zero. I've told you about Lee bracket. I I I know that because I just today wrote these themes from the last lectures. This Lee bracket. Mm -hmm. Generally, you can think about this, this, that. You can consider this small vector that uh, what do you do to get Lee bracket? You go along uh, one uh, vector field, vector field U. Then you go along vector field E. Then you go uh, backwards along vector field minus U. And then you go backwards to the, by the vector minus v, but you don't get at the, at the same point. Yes, so this contour won't be closed generally, and this small vector from initial point to the fi final point will be exactly the uh, Lie bracket of these two vector fields. Yeah, and uh, only if this contour will be. Uh, will be closed, yes, so at the end point you will get to the initial point. It means that you can integrate integrate your vector fields and get this surface. Okay, so what was this all about? This was all about to um, that the most convenient uh, basis in tangent, tangent space usually do, doesn't uh, doesn't coordinate basis because it is more convenient usually to use these types of vector fields that doesn't commutates. Uh, I hope I will illustrate this fact and will will uh, describe you Fubinish two D metric in these terms. Okay. So this notation that I'm using now is from book Exact Solutions of the Einstein Fields Equations. I don't remember the source, but they are from Germany with some classical German names. Uh, you can easily find it. Well, it's rather old uh, book, but still it is um, not trivial. Technically, it's very not trivial book. Okay. So we can use this basis, uh, which is uh, not holonomic. It means that these Lie brackets are not vanishing. As they are not vanishing, we can always the result of this uh, Lie bracket will be some another uh, vector field, and we can find these coefficients in geometry. They this coefficient is usually called structural. And uh, you can notice that this is almost the same as, as this. Yeah. So Lee bracket actually it is a, uh, it is a function on on the vector fields, but this is also the Lee derivative of vector field E B along vector field E A. And this Lie derivative can be general, generalized on every tensorial field. But we won't consider this. This is Lie derivative of a vector field EB along vector field EA. E -A. And this is covariant derivative, which we talked a lot uh, 
on the last lectures and also you will see that these structural coefficients they define the structure of Lie brackets of your basis and this uh, this coefficient uh, Christoffel symbols define the the structure of covariant derivative on your manifold. You should remember that, uh, for example, this uh, Lie derivative it does not depend on metrical structure, but this depends. But between them there is some uh, some connections this is like an admin series yes yes exactly so young mills yeah So this is always holds. Uh, not always. I'm sorry. Not always, but only for uh, Levi-Civita connection. There is some uh, modern series with non, not uh, Levi-Civita connections, but uh, you see that there are a lot of different connections and you can define it as you want but for the most privileged connection this is true uh, and in in components of these derivatives it looks it looks like the following okay so this is about the structural coefficients and Christoffel symbols. Okay. Uh, so there is different, as I said, types of bases. So in one basis, you can use non-holonomic uh, vector fields. It means that the Lie brackets non-vanishing. But in the other, you can use uh, these vector fields that are partial derivatives. It is uh, mostly use, useful two cases. Actually, you can use different, so you can intertwine these two approaches. You can use both this basis and that basis. But this is very general and actually I didn't didn't uh, see any papers with this uh, with these calculations using both approaches. Okay, so So as I said, there is coordinate basis. This is the same as holonomic. Holonomic ideas. So this is the same as integrable. This is just some different words for the for the same entities. Uh, and in this basis, we have that Lie brackets all vanishing. So because our vector fields, they are, they are uh, partial derivatives along coordinates. And the Lie brackets commutate because partial derivatives commutate. This is the same. So this is just the same fact that the partial derivatives commutate. And the, it, in, uh, in this basis, Uh, Christoffel symbols is symmetric under under this low indices. Yeah. So this is one approach that uses coordinates. And other approach uh, that is called constant metric because usually. Uh, in in this new basis, uh, uh, you have, for example, you have basis E1, 
so 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 long e n. So this is vector fields on T m vector fields. Yeah. Uh, you can consider the uh, a joint basis of one forms. Yes. So this was vector fields, and this will be one forms. Lambda one of m. The, sim the simplest uh, example is coordinate basis. It means that dx one, dx m. This is vector fields on your manifold, and differentials dx one. They are the one forms. Okay, but uh, we want not not coordinate basis, but non-holonomic basis. It means that in this case, this uh, structural uh, coefficients won't be zero, and uh, in this basis, metric can be written down as follows. squared just like uh, just like flat metric in three dimensional space is written down like that yeah so so there is one to one correspondence but we remember that this um, this uh, one forms uh, uh, corresponds to vector fields that are, that uh, are not holonomic okay so uh, that's why this uh, this approach calls constant metric. So it looks it looks like that the metric is flat because all the, these uh, coefficients between uh, be, near these uh, these squares of one forms is ones. Yes, like in Euclidean case, but it is uh, it is not. True, and I will give some examples of it. But this is very, um, very useful and very convenient approach uh, to calculate the curvatures and so on. So this is coordinate basis, and this constant metric it use non-holonomic base basis. Holo no mic. Okay. In this, uh, so this constant metric can be written down as following: zero. So this is simple partial derivative 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 along uh, c. Yes, along vector field with index c. So this means that the metric is constant. And the Christoffel symbols in this case is anti-symmetric. So here we have round brackets. So this is two different approaches that is can be useful in different situations. Okay. So, and the last that I wanted to tell you today that this K, L, M, and M bar, this is frame that is useful to calculate while tensor. Calls complex isotropic tetrad. Complex uh, K and L. They are isotropic real vectors. M and 
MBA complex, uh, the complex conjugated vectors. Uh, so it means that we consider this basis uh, formed by vectors m, m bar, k, and l. This basis called tetrada. Yes. And in this basis, our uh, our metric looks like the following m a m bar b minus 2 k a l b round bracket so this is just to illustrate new notations nothing more so we have four by four matrix. So if we have uh, this frame M and bar, we put here one and one, zero, zero. Yes, this is symmetrization. Yeah. Here we have zeros and here Okay, right, right. Uh, in this, so okay, there will be spinors and uh, links with spinors and different type of indexes. So I will conclude today just with the following statement: that using this while tensor and this size that was was written down here you can construct some matrix Q and to this is three by three three by three complex complex traceless matrix and you want to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this 3 by 3 matrix and depending on on these eigenvalues of this matrix that is uh, you calculate from the violet tensor you get the Petrov's classification of your metric okay so by classificating some eigenvalues of some matrix you classificate your matrix but this is of course only on uh, four dimensional time space okay that's all for today